about this for just a second. I'm beginning to think, as I travel this country, that I could set up shop in a convent, and some jerk would have a complaint about habits that were black and white. Here in Detroit the other day, a woman, a white woman I might add, placed an ad in the Detroit newspaper to sell her house. And in the ad it said, whites prefer. Come on, lady. I thought this was 88, not 48. Is anyone ever going to get it through their stupid, thick heads that we're not black Americans or white Americans? We're Americans! Come on. <laughs> Tonight I've invited a damn good friend of mine, Roy Innes, chairman of the Congress of Racial Equality, and a group of racists. Let's see if we can't get all of these people to understand that racism and hatred ain't making sense, pal. We're going to try and put it together again tonight. Join us, Detroit. You'll do it. I've got my, a lot of us know I've got my good friend Roy Innes here tonight, all right? And we know, and we know what happened before. We've heard all the garbage. It ain't gonna happen tonight, man, because Detroit's gonna prove we can put it all back together again. Now, I am so sick. I am so sick of people coming into Detroit, Chicago, Dallas, Miami, Baltimore, Los Angeles, and saying that they're racist and hating cities that can't work together. Detroit's going to prove to you tonight, gang, and to America, it can be done. Let me introduce the players we got so far. Home base, John Lobsinger Breakthrough Incorporated. Home base. Reverend Holly, Operation Push, Loudmouth, General Laney, handgun advocate. Let's start with you, Donald. One of the focuses of your organization called Breakthrough is to stop the black power movement in Detroit. Now, why do you feel, why do you feel the necessity to keep Detroit's blacks from working in responsible positions? Uh, Mark, Mark. Let's hear the man first, all right? Mark, can I, can I state my view on something first before yes, I sir, please respond do. to please that please question. Let's hear, the man. Let's hear the man and please speak up. Because in the first place, what you stated as the thrust of my organization, which I, rep which I represent tonight, it's, he will. It's, not, it's, it's not what you say. All right. It's not what, what you say. What is the thrust of your organization? Let's hear the thrust. The thrust of my organization breakthrough is the defense of this country against revolutionary attack by Marxist, socialist, and communist forces. And who? All right. All right. All right. Nothing basically wrong with that idea. Let's find out who the Marxist, communist, whatever the hell you call them. Who are those people? Who are they? Let's hear the man, please. We're not going to learn diddly squat, pal, if we don't listen to the guy. Now let me hear. Mark, in response to your question, my view is that the issue in this country is not <laughs> one so much, even in Detroit, is not so much one of... I didn't ask you that. I asked you to identify the Marxist, communist, whatever the they are. Tell me who they are. They must be here in Detroit, right? Are they here in Detroit? Are Communist there? Party functionaries are in the city of Detroit. And yes. they're in Washington, and they're in a lot of other places. Yes. And we know that. Yes. In this city, are they primarily white or primarily black? I don't think they're primarily anything. Okay. All right. All right. Now, we're getting someplace. Reverend Holly, let me ask you, sir. You've seen the Civil Rights Movement, and you've seen racism all your life. 
do Mr. Lobsinger's remarks smack in any way of racism to you? Well, what we hidden or, or yeah, remarks? what we really believe and what we really feel, of course, is is that Mr. Lobsinger and others who basically advocate what they're talking about that it's just a cover up and talk and basically saying that blacks in Detroit are communists and socialists and Marxists, which is not true at all. The only thing that we try to do in the chart, and basically black America, is trying to get equality. Just basically trying our best. You know? well, that's, now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something on this show. I'm going to do something on this show that I don't usually do. I'm going to preach for a minute. And my preachings are this. When you deny any element of society, especially in a capitalistic society, any element, be they blacks, whites, Hispanics, the lack of opportunity to get ahead, the denial of rights to make a good living, the denial to get all the things that you want and I want, when others would deny that, pal, communism looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Well, we're all agreed in what you just said. What? We're all agreed in what you just said. I have. Then no... what we've got to do is we've got to create that equal mobility upwards for everyone. Not a black, not a black man because he scores less than me gets the job. A black man who I know is as equally intelligent as I am gets that job. I've got no problem with that. All right. All right. Let me go to General Laney. General Laney, may I hear from you, sir? One of Coleman Young's more controversial policies, I believe. Was to oppose gun control for fear that Detroit citizens wouldn't be able to protect themselves. Now, who needs protection from what? And incidentally, I happen to be opposed to gun control too, but let me hear from you. Well, we just had an article in the paper a couple of days ago where a white woman only wants to sell her house to whites. We are, each night, our city is invaded by whites looking for black women. <laughs> suburbanites who can't get any action from their frigid wives are coming down picking up your black hookers. What I'm saying is probably these kids' fathers are out there on Woodward Avenue. If they go out there on Woodward Avenue, they'll probably find most of their fathers out there after the black women. Well, at least, sir, at least, sir, they, they know who their fathers are, don't they? No. Hmm? They think they do. Now, see, this is how racism gets back and forth. You make an irresponsible mark, I make an irresponsible mark. So when you say most of these kids, daddies probably, are out probably getting some nailed. These, probably some of these same kids, dads up there on Woodward Avenue. They'll probably be in court tomorrow. You know, I gotta tell you something, gang. You've seen them fight the Reverend Al Sharpton in New Jersey. You've seen him tangle with the skinheads in New York. He's my pal, and he fights racism in Detroit next. He's Roy Innes. Stand by. just about Detroit. This issue isn't just about Illinois or Chicago. This issue is about people, right? People who can get along one-on-one -on -one and usually do, but somehow, somehow we want to join together in little groups 
and go against each other. And that's what sucks. Roy. Roy Innes. <laughs> Reverend Al Sharpton called you a bigot on my show. And here's what happened. Let me see the tape. Roll that tape. Even after the shenanigans with him and the other... That's a lot of crap. Brother, you have your job. That's a lot of crap. Brother, 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 Uncle Tom here. I'm stuck out trying to be a white. Now, let me tell you. Hey, you got a kid. You got a kid. You got a kid. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. Let's see. If I get into your psyche, into your ear, all your life, as a young man growing up in this country and outside of this country and then into this country, you had to be putting up with being called a nigger. And then as you become finally in your mind, in your heart, and you see what's going on in this country and you see that all people can rise above that, all of a sudden you're called an Uncle Tom. You go through life not really having any race identity at all. Was that the way to fight racism on those two shows? Or is there another way? But the most important thing is for a man to have personal dignity. The greatest, the greatest immorality is to acquiesce to intimidation from anybody. You know what's beautiful about all this? And with all the problems we have had in America over the centuries and even recently over the last three or four decades, this country went through one hell of a revolution. We argued, we fought hard, but we didn't really kill each other like people do in Europe, in Asia, in Africa. We argued out and like Americans under our constitution, we came to an understanding. So much so that an action I took against a guy I considered to be a black racist, and the action I took against a guy who is a professed white racist, that we have the same and equal response from this American audience. The interesting thing is this. You notice the response from this audience, which is black and white, was just as positive to my action against Sharpton as against the skinheads. John Lobson, Roy Ennis's organization. I've known it for many years. All right. Here's the Congress. Here's the Congress of Racial Equality. Please let me finish. Is the Congress of Racial Equality and its leader, Roy Ennis, the type of organization you aim to stop? With your no. Group? No. No, no, as a matter of fact, I have no, I have no, Martin, can I talk or no? If I let can't go, talk, there's no Let point me left. introduce you loudmouth number one, John C uh, Clary and Mary Kelly, the Dearborn White Area Music. Mary, 
First of all, other than looking like I met you over at Cheetahs the other day, Roy, I wish you'd believe I'm familiar with the hateful, racist, white Aryan resistance, but I was sorry to hear it has spread all the way to Southern Michigan. What in the hell are you resisting? I am not a hater. I love my race. I want to see the, the beautifulness of the white culture which built this country, which our morals are based on, survive for my children's time. Our morals are based on disliking other people. You said you my love your you said you loved your race, system. right? Yes. What is your race? My race is the white race. What do you think about the human race, sweetheart? The human race is a bunch of bull. The human race is a bunch of bull. Yeah, the white race, boy. We stand up for our race because we're proud of who we are. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with saying white is beautiful. Nothing wrong with saying black is beautiful. No one's against that. You can stand up for your race. No one's opposed then to that. How come every time a white person stands up for his race, he's labeled as a hate monger because he wants to defend so. the white race? I don't think so. Well, I stand. I, I stand up for the white race. And everybody here says I hate. You don't know me. These people don't know me. I, I love know my you. Race and I, I know you. To I know else. you. I know you. When you would revere a man like Adolf Hitler, when you would revere that, I know you are strong. something as we move as we move into this segment let me tell you after listening to what's going on in here tonight and listening to the guests i can tell you separate this guy donald Obsinger, from these people he is by no means the type of racist all right he is a guy who likes his white race that's fine nothing wrong with that all right it's when you think the white race is the only existing race that means anything in the I world pal that, huh? i'll tell you who love their race and their culture and their heritage and they want to protect it and they don't want to mix with the other races. If you know, they are black and no they do one's that, forcing, I got no problem with No them. one's hey, forcing hey, any hey, interracial hey, marriages or anything. If they want to hey, get hey, married, hey, married, hey, married hey, what would happen hey, What would happen if your sister married hey, a black man? Then she wouldn't be my sister anymore. Huh? For you. She wouldn't be your sister anymore? That's for you. That's from South Africa. That's what you should be. There's hey. your South African flag. You like that? South African flag. Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't support apartheid like a bunch of the Jews that back Roy Ennis in organizations like his do. But I'll say one thing, Lord, and, and that's right, Roy, Israel has a lot of Roy, interest in ask, South Africa. Let me ask you, Roy, he says the Jewish organizations that back you. You familiar with Jewish organizations backing you? I am. Zip that. Hey, I want you to look at something. Sick. You're sick, baby mother. I'm not sick. I have to love my race, my culture. Your race and your culture. I'm a 
you stand You're up? Connecting and... Why don't you stand up for the white race, boy? I stand up for the white race by my actions, man. And my actions say, you're... because they're white. I love them because of their actions. I love them because of the way they help their neighbors. Let me come back up here. Zip your mouth. Nothing but... Don't throw anything. Don't throw anything. Just relax. We're going to go up here and talk to some people who make a little more sense, all right? Roy Ennis. Roy Ennis. What happens when you listen to this? What goes through your heart, your mind, your body? When I listen to this, I hear America speaking out there. Nazi hooker. If a man loves God, he's my brother. No matter what the color. No matter what the color. Yeah, man, brother. Oh, yeah, that's that color. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 What you have here today, people like you, and our society with a couple of oh, blue shots. Shut his microphone. What you A place in American society that is nothing but rejects. They don't fit into American society. They probably can't even go home for Christmas. Did you go home for Christmas and eat dinner? You're nothing but losers, and they want to blame their problems on black people. They want to blame their problems on black people and Jews, as opposed to looking at themselves and trying to fit into society. But they can't fit. Let me ask you, I can't believe that these guys down here would follow you for a second. Do you believe what these guys are talking about? Wait a second. Give them a chance, man. Do these guys, do these guys really represent what you feel? Oh, yeah. They represent what you feel? You don't believe in white supremacy, you believe no. in white separatism. There's programs like affirmative action that discriminate whites. They discriminate whites, right? I believe that know. excellence should be the sole criteria for education All or right. jobs. Look, but if a black man is more qualified that than me, he should black get that or job. Or white or exactly. If he's red or what? Your own skinheads don't agree with you. Huh? Your own skinheads don't even agree with you. What? The skinheads don't even agree with you. What don't they agree with? I they believe care. that excellence should win. Black, white, yellow, brown, red. Well, if you're the best, you should get it. What's affirmative action for? Affirmative action. Affirmative, affirmative action. action. Don't, you, Don't you tell me, me, you little...
Bob Singer, you wanted to say something to start this segment. Say it. Lord, I want the people of the United States to know that Nazis do not represent in any shape, form, or fashion the white people of the city of Detroit. Yeah, you make white people look bad. Let me go to Greg Mack. Let me come to Greg. Let me come to Greg. I'll ask you to talk, Swinehunt, when I want you. Greg, let me ask you a question. You've stated the white people in Detroit resent the black power structure. Now, what can Mayor Coleman Young do to improve race relations in this city? Let's listen. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Give us a chance to understand, too, all right? Because as white men, we have always been in control. So it becomes a little difficult when all of a sudden we lose what we think is control to a group that we're not really sure of. What we haven't seen the operations. So naturally, we're nervous. So understand that from us as we have done, as you had to understand things about us for years. Now, what can Mayor Coleman Young do to erase this problem? What Mayor Coleman Young has been doing, and that is to work on his behalf as leader of the city of Detroit and making sure racism has no place right. either with blacks or with whites. Does he and really I, work in that? Give me a program that he's doing. Well, first, I know you're not talking to me, but when you look around and you see that basically, even though 70% of Detroit is black people in Detroit, still the economy is controlled by whites. Sure. We got to understand that. That's all right. The political positions have not changed the economic conditions for black people but in the, the city of Detroit. the political conditions, if you're under strong leadership, can give an impetus to improve it. That's, that's right. What we're to and do. that's so why he established, he established the Strategic Planning Commission, which met for over a year and came up with diagnosis for the problems that were being... What was the diagnosis? The diagnosis that racism was one of the underlying problems, a structural Always problem here in Detroit. Has and it's the only way we were going to address any problems was to first address that problem of racism. Wait a, economic. Second, wait a second. You're telling me then that the mayor took one year... Not the a, mayor. A genius he, committee he took not, one year to decide that racism was a problem? It wasn't the mayor's committee. It was the bank. It was the white leadership. It was the corporation and paneled by the mayor. And they came with the conclusion with their own rich white selves Brilliant that the people. main problem Brilliant was racism. People. And the only way that they could eliminate the problem was to bring the jobs from Oakland County, from other cities that okay. they've taken them out of Detroit, right. back to but, Detroit. But when we start and talking the about... the racist pattern that it? they have went on when the last talk, 30 years. When we talk about racism among blacks and whites, why can't we understand that each, is, uh, each of us is the, trying to defend his own turf? And if we forget that it's our own turf, what and, turf realize, have, and realize that it's everyone's turf, that's what I'm saying, pal. But you can't have Jesse Jackson, who you represented, on one hand saying that uh, Mr. Bush was a racist because he pointed out that Dukakis' furlough program was a failure and with Willie Horton. And he uh, was a racist he for doing that. He was a racist? That's right. Then Jesse Bush, was a racist. Was racist. Jesse was a racist was for calling it Jaime Town. No, he wasn't a racist for calling it He Jaime wasn't Town. a racist for that. No, no, he wasn't. He said that in the privacy of his own company. And he did not mean it in a derogatory manner. We're not going to go into that issue because that is not the context. Boy. That is an issue Boy. that's got to be no, understood. But no, he was not racist. But, you, but neither was George Boy. Bush racist for saying the furlough program didn't work. Here's an example. It was the implication. It was the implication. Well, the I, implication is a right. guy raped a woman, yeah. all right, yeah. and yeah. stabbed and the husband 23 times, tied him up, and made him watch it. Now, I don't give a damn if the guy's white, green, yellow, or purple. Why did he's, he so? He's a total... No white who raped and stabbed. Oh, they have been. Oh, right. Yes, they but not been. out of Dukakis' furlough program. But are we sure there have been some people that have come I'm out I'm sure there have been, too. Have we that. were talking about Dukakis. All I'm well, talking about... Tell you, all I'm play on the racist emotions of white. Do me a favor. Yes, sir. Of course it's right. All I'm trying to show is we both, both go sides. off okay. in such far out There's directions no doubt about that. that we don't get things straight. There's now. no doubt about that. And we have to listen to this kind of thing. When we be working on ourselves, and I, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want our audience, I want our audience, can you hear me? I want you guys to do me a favor. 
and this will just frost their ass. I want you to stand up. I don't care if it's a white guy, a black girl, a green person. Stand up, hold hands, hug, do whatever you want. Make these bums know what it's all about. Make these bums know what it's all about. We got it. We got it. You got it, baby. Now, to you, sir. You, the audience, come up here and speak. We're 31 UHF. Thanks to the Flaming Caucasians, our house band. And a reminder, huh? They're all right. A reminder. Speaking of Flaming Caucasians, quickly before I go to you, on November the 28th, all right, the day after this show airs, we have done a special. I have spent three hours interviewing James Earl Ray, the accused assassin and convicted assassin of Martin Luther King. Now, now, in that show, for the first time, we develop new information, new evidence, get an admission that's never before been made, and the name of the person who pulled the trigger. Watch that. Right, go ahead, Bob. I got a question. I got a question for you guys. Why must you hate everyone that doesn't conform to your own values? You just see the hate, fighting, violence, don't solve anything. You know, you only succeed in drawing this country apart. The rich monopoly capitalists, the black source scientists. Play the violence. You, you look at the, look at the progress we've made for. And you look at the progress we've made for racism. You may, I, may I suggest something? May I suggest we throw their ass out of here? But if it brings peace between all of us, baby, that's the new one again. Peace for all of us. Go ahead, pal. You know, they have their disgust. Speak up. They have their disgusting salute. Did you like that? Well, here's a nice salute. God bless America. Go ahead, pal. In handling the skinheads, such as we just did by throwing him out, we can handle that problem. But it's the people that behind the ivory walls and the corporate boardrooms that push their agenda secretly through America is the real racism problem that and we have to face. And who gets screwed? The middle class. Exactly. And the middle class of this country has been screwed for years. And that's why it's black time, middle class can we, never go black further. Black middle class, white middle class has to join. Oh, we're dead, baby. Exactly. It ain't gonna happen. Go ahead. I'm free to choose everything that I believe in. No one's going to tell me what I believe is wrong. That's my right as an American, and that's the way I that's the, the way I choose to believe. And I'd like to know I'd like to know why Roy Innes isn't up on assault charges for attacking a young white youth. That's a racial a attack. A young white youth. That's a racial attack. It was it no racial too. attack.
When you call someone, exactly. he, grabbed child, the microscope. he grabbed him right here. He didn't choke him. Roy Ennis is big enough. He didn't need to choke, pal. He could crack your face in half with one blow. Now you get out of here, too. First of all, I want to say it's disgusting to have to be in a room with these pigs to begin with. Second of all, I've lived in Detroit almost all my life. I have white friends, black friends, Arab friends, Jewish friends, Spanish friends, and I see one race! And the human race! Americans! Pal. Yeah! Go! They may be white, or they may be black, and I may be white, but we're all Americans! We're all Americans! Most importantly... In an effort, in an effort, in an effort to protect these young poor, misguided slime. Please leave them out and let them get out of here. We don't need them. We're human! We don't need them. We don't need them. Now, sir, you. I would like to say to all of us, if we could come together on one common ground and grow like little flowers, all different colors, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not how how tall we get is how is how we grow and how beautiful we are in that vase which is called america right right the vase that holds the flowers of all the different colors is still the usa yes let's all do it together baby and let's come back to this audience in just a minute yeah with little young kids and they destroy millions of lives. That's baloney. And That's they, baloney. And they create more racism. You're damn right. Go ahead, man. Let me hear this lady. Let me hear this lady. God said for everyone to love thy neighbor. You can't fight each other. You got to put it together. You got to have unity. Let's stick together. Let's stick together as well. Let me tell you something. I, I want to tell you something in just a minute. Because you've got to be commended in just a second. Yes, ma'am, what does that say? Forrester. Yeah. Okay. Just one thing I want to say. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm considered, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm considered a minority, too. You know, but I like getting a job not to fulfill um, minority requirements. I want to, you know, I want to get there with some intelligence, just like other Americans are. Yeah. And that's really, you see, what we are doing when we say that, oh, you're black, you're Hispanic, therefore I'm going to give you a break. What we are saying as whites is, you're dumb. You're not as smart as me. And that's crap. And that's another way of creating more racism. The black race, the yellow race, the brown race, the white race, the red race. We're Americans. We're equally smart. I'm not so much worried about the racism that happens on the grassroots level. 
A lot of these every day, John Q. Citizens are willing to work together. But where it really hurts me is when it gets up into the decision making, the policy making process of the government level. But that's you know? what's happened to the entire middle class of America. Yeah, sir. but what's they what? have never had access. They have never sat on the committees, neither have the blacks, neither have the Hispanics, but neither has middle-class white America. That's why we're the ones who have to get together, unite, and tell the government, we're the government, they're nothing, man. But while we're, we're waiting, while we're waiting to unite, the impact is being felt mostly in every major urban area yes, where the blacks is. are. I mean, we're yes, sir, it consistently, is. Yes, sir, systematically it is. saturated with drugs. Yes, sir, it is. And, and one of the things the we have to do... The education of One of the things we have to do, sir, you're not wrong, but one of the things we have to do, white or black, is stop making excuses for our failures, lift ourselves up, and move ahead. Because you can do it and I can do it. I think and the first place go. we move to get rid of this drug... A lot of people think it's blacks against whites. It's not. It's Americans against Nazis. As long as there's Nazis out there. I thought we got rid of them in 45, pal. We should but have. if we haven't, we let's get rid of them now. legally now. Let's get rid of them legally. Let's support them. Get them out. I don't give a damn what the Constitution says. Yeah. There's no room for them. And let me tell you, you guys have demonstrated you are the best audience I have ever seen in America.